well, it's time to do some problems for activity-based costing. And if you look at my screen, you'll notice that I don't have my traditional black screen up with neon colors uh, that I'll write in. I have an Excel worksheet up. Because once we get to chapter 7, 8, 9, 10, forward, you'll find that the amount of hand calculations you have to do start to increase dramatically because you're no longer solving for a single answer but solving for a grid or a matrix of answers. Uh, this question alone would require 24 separate calculations to answer. So we're going to answer it using Excel. So I hope to uh, get you used to transitioning from pen and paper to Excel. So let's read the question that we're doing, exercise 7-2, first stage allocation in a service company. And just to refresh you, first stage allocation is where we take our general ledger accounts, our overhead accounts in, uh, from our general ledger, and we start assigning those costs to different activity cost pools. And I said that you can think of the activity cost pools as kind of T accounts, manufacturing overhead T accounts representing each activity. Not that they are again, but you can think of them that way and it helps you sort of see that it's kind of just the same as process costing or job costing. Okay, let's read our question here. Mobile Cash Corporation operates a fleet of armored cars that makes scheduled pickups and deliveries for its customers. The company is implementing an ABC system that has four activity cost pools, travel, pickup and delivery, customer service, and other. The activity measures are kilometers for the travel cost pool, number of pickups and deliveries for the pickup and delivery cost pool, and number of customers for the customer service cost pool. The other cost pool has no activity measure, and we know from the chapter that anything that goes in other means it doesn't fit into any other cost pool, and that there is no activity uh, measure associated with other. It's sort of a catch-all phrase like organization sustaining activities. Let's continue on. The following costs will be assigned using the ABC system. And we can see right down here, if you follow my, uh, my cursor along, here are the costs. We have six cost categories taken from the general ledger. These are the uh, recorded transactions over the course of the year from their existing cost system. So there's 1,820,000 of, of these overhead costs that part of these costs are incurred by performing these particular activities travel pickup and delivery and customer service so we need to assign some of this for instance driver and guard wages this 840,000 some of it needs to be assigned to travel some of it needs to be assigned to pickup and delivery so that we can cost each of these activities a little bit better so those are the six general ledger cost accounts that we're going to use to assign to the activity cost pools the distribution of resource consumption across the activity cost pool is as follows. And here is the matrix of, of uh, uh, assignment that the company feels should be followed. Now, this first part up here and this part up here is what's given in the text. All I've done is replicate it in, in the spreadsheet. So let's see if we can get uh, sort of a, a, um, a cognitive understanding of what's going on here. What we see here in driver and guard wages, we have $840,000. Management's best judgments and best estimates, notice I'm not saying that their cost accounting system tells us, I'm saying that their best estimates and their best judgments. So these numbers are determined outside of any costing system. They're determined by management sitting down and saying, we think it's about this number here and we think it's about that number there. I want you to keep that in mind, that that's the shortcoming of activity-based costing, is that this whole matrix here is management's best guess. What they're saying is that for the travel activity cost pool, 40% of this $840,000 should go here. 45% should be in this activity pool. 10% of, of the driving and guard wages are really for customer service. 10% of their time is dedicated towards customer service. And then there's 5% where we feel that eh, it doesn't really fit in any of these categories. So we should get a total of 100% because we have to apportion the full cost. So across all four, it should total 100% for each of the six categories. Our job is to figure out what the costs are. So in other words, in travel, in the activity cost pool of travel, what's the total? Well, the total is 40% of 840, 75% of 270, the 70% of 150, and then nothing of these. 
But then we have to do this, for the same thing for the second column, the same thing for the third, the same thing for the fourth. The other way of looking at it is driver and guard wages. How should that be apportioned? Well, 40% of it should go to travel, 45% should go to pickup and delivery, 10% should go to customer service, and 5% to other. So we can see that with six, with only, now this is a small example, only six general ledger accounts and four activity cost pools, we have 24 calculations that we have to do, six times four. You can imagine if we had 40 different general ledger accounts and nine different cost pools, you're talking about 360 calculations. You really have to use a spreadsheet. So I'm going to show you how to get started here. Um, we're going to fill in uh, this cell first. So once we go to travel, all we need to do is we highlight the cell, we hit the equal sign. Then we just tap on the 40% and we use the multiplication sign times and we tap up there and hit enter. There we go. It's that simple. Uh, so Excel allows you to do the calculation very quickly. Now we could do this with a calculator, but here's the deal. 40% of 840, and this is stuff you do in grade nine, grade eight, grade seven even. Uh, so getting you to do that 24 times doesn't add any value to this course because this is grade nine math at this point. So if it's grade nine math at this point, there's no point in, in assessing you on your ability to do grade 9 math, you may as well let Excel do all of that simple stuff and focus on the higher level stuff that, of what all of this means. So once we have this 336 in here, what we can do uh, to make things easier for us is we can move up to the function line right here and just click in the function line. And we want to use our backspace arrow key to, to make sure that we're in front of the K, the letter K, and put a dollar sign in front of the letter K move over and put a dollar sign in front of number six, hit enter, notice nothing changes. But here's what this allows us to do. We want to fill in the rest of this row, but we want to fill it in with 40% of 840 here, 45% of 840 here, 10% of 840 here. So notice that as we move across here, we're moving across here, but we don't want to move this way. We want to stay here. We want to stay grounded here so that as we move across here, this cell stays exactly the same. So we ground it by putting dollar sign K, which locks the column in place, dollar sign six locks the row in place. And see this little square at the bottom of, of, the, of the cell? Move onto it until you get that little plus sign and just drag across, there you go. You don't have to enter equals this times this equals this times this 24 times. You just have to do it once. Now, uh, we, we, we would have to change it in this cell because we were still locked here. But let me show you a little trick that you can use. All you have to do is just drag down this row now. And for each of these cells, they're now wrong. But all you have to do is just click in here, backspace from the six, hit the number seven, enter. Click in here, backspace from the six, hit the number eight, enter. Click in here again. And when I say click in here, look at where my mouse is. It's over on the, on the function line in here. You click here, you backspace, now this is customer representative uh, salaries and expenses. If we look up here, customer representative and salaries, this is the 180 that we want. We can see that we're in, we're in row nine. So we just backspace, we hit nine. We make sure that the 180 is highlighted for this one. You hit enter. Then you do the same thing for each one. Click here, backspace, and we want number 10. Make sure that the 40,000 is highlighted. Hit enter, and finally our last one, over here, backspace, highlight the, let it know that it's cell 11, hit enter, there we go. So now we've got the row across which is correct and the row down which is correct. So what we want is we want to fill in all of these. So all we have to do is click on this one and just highlight the whole row. So you're going to click on here, hold your mouse down and drag it. Go to the plus sign at the very bottom till it turns to the dark plus sign, drag it across, there you go. 24 calculations done and our spreadsheet is done so let's uh, let's see what our answers look like and see if they make sense so we'll take <clears throat> vehicle depreciation at random under customer service is zero so we should have zero costs assigned to that vehicle depreciation under customer service is zero and you can check each of these but they make sense all of these are just total so this 840 is the total across here this 270 is the total across here this 150 is the total across here etc 
and the totals down, this is a function at the, at the, at the very bottom, this last cell, is just a summation. You can see up in the function column that it's just the sum of these last columns. So this is 1,820,000. We needed to apportion 1,820,000. Now, we can also add this cell across this way to see if it equals 1,820,000 as well. And it would uh, uh, because all of these across equal all of these, and this sum of this column equals the sum of this column, so these must be correct. So let's interpret what we have before we leave. What we're saying is the activity cost pool of travel has $643,500 assigned to it. So in first stage allocation, we've got all of our overhead costs from our general ledger accounts now within each of the four activity cost pools. This other, we're not going to do anything with. It has no activity associated with it. But travel, remember, was kilometers. So we would divide the number of kilometers driven uh, or 643 divided by the number of kilometers driven and we would get an overhead cost per kilometer. For pickup and delivery it was the number of pickups and deliveries. So let's say it was 1,000 we would divide the 433 by 1,000 and we'd get 4,335 per pickup and delivery. Now that's unrealistic. I just made up the thousand pickup and delivery off the top of my head just to show you how it's done. And then of course customer service, the 438,000 would be divided by the number of customers or whatever activity the company chose to be the activity cost driver for incurring these particular costs. Clearly if we're traveling, kilometers driven seems to be the most appropriate cost driver that drives all of these costs, correct? That is 7.2 using Excel.